It's working. Hey, look at that. Good job. Mur now Murphy and Sanchez and work have been listening. All because of Bridget. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about counseling. Not the most enjoyable sus uh, subject in the world, but it is critical. Officers routinely suck at counseling. In fact, we're terrible at it. So this is my way of trying to get you in that mindset a little bit now because those officers that are effective at counseling stand out amongst their peers dramatically, particularly amongst the NCOs. I'll never forget giving a Sergeant First Class who'd been in the Army 17 years his, OE, his NCOER counseling, where I sat him down and explained to him why he got the rating that he did and all this, all his performance, and he looked at me and said, this is the first time an officer's ever counseled me. Been in the Army 17 years. It's crazy, that's how bad we are at it, all right? So, Pay attention, you know, learn some things, take some notes. Um, I have passed around the, this form, which is, you can find an Army Publishing Directory. It's an Army Pubs DA4856. Is anybody familiar with this form or seen this form before? Yeah, if you were enlisted at some point or in the service, you should have seen it. Anybody received a bad one of these? Alito, what was, what was yours? Which one did you get? Article 15. You got Article 15? <laughs> Which level? Company. Company, correct? They took some right, didn't they, from you? Well, not company. Uh, that took summarize? Oh, uh, just summarize. Summarize, okay, all right. It's not as yeah. bad. Uh, what did you do? <laughs> uh, I didn't show the formation, and then I forget to sign out on leave, so it was a good thing. All right, okay, that's manageable. Will they just give you some extra duty? Seven days, seven, seven? Uh, 14. 14? Make an example out of you. What about you, Thomas? What was your run-in with the DA-4856? We had two. Okay. The first one was because I missed up PT, overslept, and disrespect. Disrespect to a non-commissioned officer, I assume? Yes. Mm. Did, they give up? Did you get Article 15? No. What about who else? Burdick, you had your hand up? What was that? You've seen it, okay. Really? Did you get a positive one? Initial? Yeah. All right. Not you. Not Never got one? Well, Brick, have you had to deal with this? Yes, sir. Lots. Negatives? Bad ones? Good ones? Uh, no. <laughs> Mostly positive, sir. Mostly I don't think I've had negative too okay. often. It happens. I've gotten a negative one before it happens. Yeah. It's all good. I forgot to report an SIR up to the company commander. 72 hours later, his soldier puts in leave because his wife attempted suicide. She's like, I didn't know about this. I'm like, I forgot to tell you. Whoops. <laughs> that didn't go over well. <laughs> it happens, okay? Uh, so this is, we're, we're gonna have the majority of the class is gonna be on this form, okay? This is the approved form for you to do your counseling. They don't, as we talked about in some of the examples, it doesn't always have to be negative, right? Everybody views this as a negative form. It can't be used for positive. Have you ever given a positive or seen a positive counseling? The thing is, people don't do enough of it. But you absolutely can do it. And if you think your junior enlisted soldier doesn't care if they get a positive counseling from their lieutenant, you are wrong, wrong can be, okay? The second lieutenant goes to a, brand, a soldier, specialist or PFC, whoever, and says, you did a great job. You scored a 308 PFT. You nailed that training whatever the circumstance is, and you highlight and put it put it on paper and tell them, we're gonna place this in your file. So when it comes time for an NCO to review your file and recommend you for the board, one of the things, and for promotion, one of the things they're gonna run across is this positive counsel coming from me. You don't think that has an impact, you're wrong, okay? So this can be used as a positive. This is sort of like a, a carrot and a whip if you want it to be, okay? All right. Yeah. So I know for us, like, we have, like MI gets really backed up with specialists who want to become sergeants. Mm -hmm. So like that's a big differentiating factor when you have like eight specialists and they're all kind of the same and you yeah. really know like who's who and right. those like really kind of set you apart or like help you decide like which soldiers to push through. Absolutely, it's a great tool. And again, officers routinely suck at it, okay? It's just not good. NCOs aren't much better in my opinion, but some are better than others, okay? All right, so we're gonna talk about approaches and how to handle counseling. 
where he gives some examples, some of the things that I've run across, and then we're going to go through some scenarios where you're going to counsel each other, okay? How many people we have? Three, six, nine, twelve, I have even numbers finally. Okay, there are three types of counseling that you need to be aware of. The most common is the one on top, which is event-oriented counseling. This is for a, a singular, isolated incident, like Alito missing PT and not signing out for Lee, or Thomas disrespecting an NCO, you know, <laughs> or me not reporting an SIR up uh, when a serious incident reports, what SIR means, uh, to my company commander when I was a brand new second lieutenant. Okay, this is it's a singular event in time that you fail to meet a standard or disobey an order or violation of army regulation, something to that effect, okay? This is the most commonly formed, the most commonly used type of counsel, okay? Hey, now Thomas, you failed to make three consecutive PT formations. As a result, you know, this is just, this behavior is unacceptable. It, it, it distracts from your morale and does not prepare you as a soldier. Therefore, I recommend these things. And we'll go through what the counseling actually look like, okay? Any questions on event oriented? Pretty straightforward. Okay. Second one is performance based, okay? Performance oriented. What do you think performance oriented counseling would be? I know it says it up there, but can somebody give me an example? Performance oriented counseling. Uh, so maybe like a new sergeant gets placed as a team leader, and then like a few months later, you kind of counsel them on how it's going to do it. Yeah, great. So, great segue to my question. Some of you should know this. How often are soldiers supposed to be counseled? We were like once a month, so it's monthly. All right. So if I'm PFC, you know, Smith, and I'm in a formation, I have a, sar a sergeant E5 that's in charge of me as a team leader, most likely. They are my first line supervisor. They are required to counsel me every single month. What are they covering in that monthly counseling? Any thoughts? What should they cover? <coughs> performance <coughs> over the previous month, right? So a, a smart and intelligent sergeant would say, you know, PFC Brinka, these are the six things that I wanted you to improve on in the month of January. Now we're in mid-February, and here's how I think you progressed. You said you wanted to increase your PT score from a, a 210 to a 212. Congratulations, you got a 213. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you wanted to you know, take two classes online to better yourself. And you're enrolled in two. Good job. You address that. And then you also set the goals for the month of February leading into March. So these are some of the things that I want you to work on. Hey, we have a big fuel problem coming up. I want you to you know, make sure your vehicle is up to shape and being PMCS every day. Just things like that, okay? You cover it. I'll give you far more details uh, when we get when we cover the actual form here shortly. Some of the other things is you do annually. So watch me back up. So NCOs and officers, how often are they counseled? You got an answer to that one? Once a year, quarterly. Once a year. Anybody else have an answer? I just said quarterly. I don't know. So. You got it right. It's quarterly. So sergeant, all the way up to generally army supposed to be counseled quarterly. There is the biggest violation, okay? I do believe that soldiers, or NCOs for the most part, do counsel those soldiers monthly. The biggest problem you're gonna see in that is not so much that they don't counsel them, it's the quality of the counseling. It tends to be really cookie cutter. Like, I have these six people that I need to counsel, and it's due tomorrow, I gotta turn into the first sergeant, so I'm gonna make six exact counselings and put the name on the front, and never change the name on the front. And it's very vague and it's not personalized. There's no thought put into it, okay? That's what you'll run into the most commonly and it's easy to spot. One of the, I think is most violated is NCOs and officers don't get counseled monthly. So I have been in the Army 10 years. I have had, how many come here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. I've had about seven or eight, there's about seven, seven first-line supervisors in my 10 years. How many of those seven 
routinely counseled me once a quarter. Okay. Zero. One. Oh, nice. There's one. <laughs> That's it. Okay. We suck at this. We need to get better. Okay. So one of the things I implemented when I was commander was I did counsel them once a, once a quarter. It made a huge difference. Okay. You need to do the same. Again, that is a way of showing that you are a little better and distinguishing yourself amongst your peers. Doesn't matter if it's guard, reserve, active, it's all the same. Okay? Um, officers and NCOs get what's called evaluations for uh, NCO, it's an NCOER, uh, Commission Officer Record or Evaluation Report. And then for an officer, it's an OER, Officer Efficiency Report. Okay? They're done annually. That is something that you want to do, let's say, an in initial counseling, like you said, somebody comes into the unit or takes a new position. You want to do your quarterly counseling with them, and similar to what you're going to get from me at the end of this semester at OML, you're going to get a performance-oriented counseling that you would do for an annual evaluation. Okay? So this is for a period of time, something you're evaluating, your improvements. You can also do this for, say, somebody that wants to improve their PT score. It doesn't necessarily mean their family. Say, hey, your goal is to go to air assault, okay? The company standard is 270 to go to air assault. You're sitting at a 240. Counseling's not negative. It's just a counseling stating, hey, you have assigned a goal for you to obtain 30 points improvement on your APFT in 60 days. And this is the plan, how you're gonna get there. We'll reevaluate monthly this check-in. Perfectly fine, okay? Any questions on performance oriented? See the difference between the two? Okay, those are the two you're gonna do 95 to 99% of the time. There is one more that's prevalent here and there. It's a professional growth counseling, okay? It talks about planning and some of the things that goals to achieve that are separate than your day-to-day -day operations, okay? You can talk about um, future duty assignments, Okay, the one you will all get this right when you who wants to go active. Okay, I don't know about the guard or reserve, but I have a feeling that they do the same thing. But I know this happens in active duty. When you first show up to a, a unit, if the unit's worth its grain of salt, which most are pretty decent at this, you're going to get a counseling from your company commander, right? They're going to say, hey, there's duties, responsibilities, all the good things that they want you to do. But you're going to get a separate counseling from another officer. You know who that is? You're the PL, so who else would be the second officer counseling? Mm -hmm. Italian. Italian commander. The lieutenant colonel is going to want to counsel you. And here's the reason why. He has to rate all the lieutenants, just like I'm rating you guys and gals, okay? So there's 35, 40 some odd lieutenants in a battalion, somewhere around there. And just like we're doing here, and he's gonna do the same thing. You're gonna find out who's my number one, who's my number 36. So he's gonna give you, he or she's gonna give you that initial counseling saying, hey, in order to get my ranking, some of the things that I'm looking for, some of the things that I expect of an officer, if you want it, here's my pet peeves. If you do this, congratulations, that's where you're gonna be, okay? Uh, in addition, they're gonna outline Kind of like your future duty assignments and your progression going forward. Who wants to go combat arms? Not a lot, a couple. As we talked about several times, the likelihood that you'll get a platoon right when you show up is not very high because there's just a lot of demand for that position and there's a lot of lieutenants, so you're probably going to end up in staff. How do they determine who takes PL first and second and third and all that? He or she should give you an outline of how you can obtain your desired goal to be a PL in the infantry unit or field artillery unit or whatever it is. Okay? And then they can talk about their progression. We want you to be in staff for six months, prove yourself, do a good job, and we'll move you to an open PL spot in one of the companies. You do that for no more than a year. And then after 12 months, we're going to pull you out. If you did really well, you become an XO of the company. Or if you did. You know, or if there's just no spots, we'll put you back in staff for a period of time and they kind of give you that outline, okay? So they should do that. Any decent 05 who's in command, which all of them are at that point, should do that, okay? So that's an example of professional uh, 
grow, uh, growth council. Any questions on the three? This is not really that challenging of material, but just want to make sure everybody's clear. Okay. There are four steps to the counseling process. We've covered this in 202. I don't know if anybody remembers the counseling. Yeah, okay. You're the only one. Tuesday was like, yeah, okay. You got one. One out of 34. Making a difference in the world. Um, the counseling process is four stages, okay? Some of this is really obvious, okay? Some of this, there's some, probably some things you need to think about that may not be right off, obvious right off the cusp. Identify the need for the counseling is one of those obvious ones, okay? Somebody fails a PT test, they need a counseling, right? Somebody disrespects a commission officer, they need a counseling, right? If somebody, you know, you can figure this out, okay? There's a need. And chances are, if it's something that's on your radar as a lieutenant, they need to be counseled, okay? Positive, negative, professional growth, whatever. If it's something that comes up on your spectrum, they need to be counseled. You shouldn't be doing a lot of the counseling as a team leader, okay? You have NCOs. Are there, can anybody think of a situation where the platoon leader would directly need to counsel a specialist or below? It's like a really serious issue, sir. Okay. Can you give me an example? Doesn't have to be negative. Negative is the obvious one. It's like sharp incident, sir, or if they want to report something. Yeah. The company commander may take that one, but yeah. Potentially. It's a really serious incident, but if they have like an issue with their platoon sergeant, probably need to talk to the PL about it. There you go, that's what I'm looking for. Strife inside the platoon. Yeah. That the NCOs have attempted to correct that hasn't been corrected. It's a great time to do um, a counseling from an enlisted. So I had a situation, my one of my personal examples, I showed up to a platoon, brand new second lieutenant, been in the army like six months, okay? I had no idea what I didn't know. And there was no E7, which we didn't have one. So we had like three or four E6s and they're all right around the same time. The difference between one of them was like a date of rank of like 90 days, okay? That's it. And okay, they both have been uh, sergeant, staff sergeants for like seven years or five years or however long it was, but 90 days was Delta. So guess what? That person that was 90 days more senior became the platoon sergeant. And that was not well received by the other staff sergeants, okay? Because they didn't like this person. So I show up after this has all happened, right? <laughs> not knowing anything. And I could just see the infighting and the bickering. So nobody outranks anybody at this point. They're just, I'm, I'm the platoon sergeant. You're the platoon sergeant. You know, it's, so how do I deal with this, right? So I did a shot across the bow, I thought it was, because I counseled every single person in a platoon individually, every single one of them, just for like two or three minutes, nothing real long, but the soldiers were really quick, like, hey, you know, pass your PT test, show up to work on time, right time, right uniform, be motivated, don't commit any of the violations of Army values, show an interest, and I will do everything I can make your life here as, as prosperous as possible. Whether it's going to schools, you know, getting time off from when we do good things, we'll figure something out, okay? There's a reward system there, I don't know what it is yet, but I have an interest in seeing you succeed. All well received. Sergeants, it was a little different, right? It was, hey, you know, hey, this is the requirements of an NCO. You will counsel your soldiers monthly. You will also pass a PT test and all those good things too, but you will, do an NCO's business. I expect you to check on your soldiers. You know their situations. Be a leader. Conduct PT. Be an organizer of PT. Staff sergeants is a little higher. I expect you to conduct quarterly counselings on your sergeants and ensure that they are conducting monthly counselings on their soldiers. I expect you to operate at the level of a staff sergeant, being a subject matter expert in your particular field. Okay? And then a platoon sergeant is a little different from that. And what it did is a lot of people were like, whoa! Why is the lieutenant counseling all my soldiers for me? It's just a thought, okay? It was just a process, and I thought it worked originally, but I didn't know what I was doing well enough, and they just all hated each other, so it was a shit show for like six months at least. 
So these are just examples that you could run into, okay? And this is how counseling can help you get through it. Okay, so identifying the needs pretty easy. Preparing the counseling. What goes into preparing a counseling? So let me give you an example. Let's say Alito fails height and weight. It's, it's always a problem for him. And you have to, you're his platoon leader, and you have to give him counseling for failure to pass height and weight. What are some of the things that you should do to prepare before you sit down with PFC Alito? Regulation. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Well, what about the regulation? Has to be like um, has to be a precise so they you know they can go back to it and know what the standards are. Right. Yeah. Hey, you're authorized. You know, five seven. 130 and you were 57134. It's, it's unacceptable, not in accordance with Army Regulation 600 9. Your authorized body fat percentage is 33%, and you busted 34%. Yeah, get into the standards why he's being counseled. That's paramount. Did you have something else? I was just going to say, like, how you can see the first Yep. I mean, that's the, the foundation, right? You have to have why he's being counseled. What else? Anything else? Steps on how to fix it. <clears throat> yeah, you have a plan on how he's going to correct it, right? You're going to see a nutritionist. You're going to do whatever. Yeah. I was going to say piggy bar, but maybe have a history of his piggy bar. Yeah, that's a good one, right? Hey, this soldier has been an historic failure of height and weight, but he, when he first came into the United States, he weighed 150, now he's down to 131, 134. Doing good, okay? What did Jeff something that doing? That was it? Okay, all right, you guys are thinking outside the box, okay? You can talk to his first line supervisor and see the history and how they perform in other areas. So there may be some um, mitigating factors. Like, hey, brand new father of triplets. <laughs> Ooh, that changes things, huh? Like, whoa, standard standards, but like, okay, we got some understanding there, right? You know, <laughs> things change. That, that get my attention. I'm like, hey, you're, just the fact that you showed up to work, I'm already impressed, you know? <laughs> right? So there you go. Okay, some are more empathetic about that than others, but yeah. <laughs> there are some things that come up, right? So find out that information is how you prepare the counseling. Should you be writing the counseling? So there's a couple schools of thought. Should this be blank when he shows up to the counseling and you fill it out together? Or should you have it prepared and you execute it when he shows up? Which one? Prepared. Anybody think the other way? You think you guys, right? There's a school of thought that thinks that. I would most likely for negative formatted counselings have it prepared. Okay? I like to do the formal portion first. Okay? We'll have a discussion after, but we're gonna go through this to a T, front to back. You're gonna sign it, I'm gonna sign it, and then we'll have a discussion. And a lot of times, you gotta be careful about that because sometimes these discussions can get ugly. And I always reserve the right when I give a counsel is that anytime I feel like the conversation becomes unproductive, we're gonna be done. And that's it. So just understand that going in. So make sure you choose your words carefully. If it soon becomes unproductive, bye. Point to IG. Okay, so that's preparing the counseling. Pretty straightforward. Pretty easy. There's some counterintuitive things you kind of need to think through. Uh, conducting the counseling, not a whole lot to think about, but there are some mitigating factors um, that you might want to concern yourself with. So, where? A location. So, if I was going to do a, a counseling for him for failing to hide weight, what's a suitable location? That's, an, that's something you probably didn't want the whole mass of the year, right? You wouldn't want to do that in formation, right? You wouldn't want to do that in an open bay situation where the platoon is entirely there, looking, working, can hear everything. Okay, fair. What about a really negative counseling, like um, UCMJ, Article 15 counseling? Hey, okay, you've disrespected a non-commissioned officer, and I recommend you for Article 15. Where would you want to do that at? Closed doors with the NCO that disrespects you. Yeah, yeah, you nailed it right on the head. So that's where I was transitioning to. Is I would do that in private, but more importantly, where I was going to go is who should be in the counseling with you? Should you ever counsel somebody by yourself? 
Yes, no? It does. It does depend. So if you're Alito's is, is a platoon leader. Or I don't know why I keep picking on him today. He's a platoon leader. He's going to give a counseling, a negative counseling to a female soldier. Should he do a counseling with her in his office with the door shut? No, sir. Why not? Why? Two soldier rule. Perception, right? Nobody knows what's going on there except for them two. And their accounts of what happened there could differ vastly, right? So they're bringing that third party. There are certain circumstances where you can counsel somebody individually with the door shut. You and your platoon sergeant, not a problem. You got the commander and you, not a problem. You and a staff sergeant, probably not a problem, okay? Just be careful. You need to start thinking about when you're conducting the counseling, not only location, but who should be present for the um, counseling. My favorite story on this is, it's not really a counseling, it's more of a UCMJ hearing. I think I've told you all this before. But the battalion commander was giving uh, an Article 15, field grade Article 15, which they could take two ranks, take two, was it, 30 days base pay, and confine you to the barracks and the and extra duty for 45 days. Okay, pretty, not, not a good day, right, if you go in front of those. And this particular soldier was just a cocky, arrogant, thinks he's smarter than everybody in the room, and I forget what the offense was, he was just disrespectful to an NCO. And the battalion commander always has a sergeant major in the room with him when he does an Article 15, and a company commander and a first sergeant. So you got a lot of people there that have some, a lot of institutional knowledge on how to handle individuals like him. He didn't quite realize that. And the colonel asked him if he wanted to have the Article 15 open or closed door session. And leading up to this, the soldier been snarky and all that. And he said, I want to do open door because I don't trust anybody. Sergeant Major got really pissed off. Said, okay, sir, we're going to stop this right here. You want open door? No problem. Call the battalion to a formation. And they had an entire battalion formation. They did a 360 circle around this soldier. He stood at attention, and they conducted a full-fledged Article 15 with 800 people looking on. <laughs> Significant emotional event for that soldier. He got embarrassed in front of his peers, all the NCOs in the entire battalion, at his request. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. There are circumstances where you can make a public spectacle out of it, okay? There are there are very few and far between, but they do exist. Okay, that's my favorite example. Never heard that soldier was good after that. I think I didn't hear I left he left the unit shortly thereafter, so but yeah, he, I think he learned his lesson. So Okay, and then the most important part of the counseling, in my opinion, because it gets violated the most, is the follow-up, okay? So you have said PFC Thomas is going to pass his PT test because he failed to do it last time, and these are the steps that he's gonna in place. The important aspect of that is that you come back to him after a period of time, it would be 30 days, two weeks, whatever you outline in the counseling, and follow up to ensure that he or she or he has committed to the program and he's shown progress. If he has, you can close out the counseling and say, hey, good job, good work. You know, we'll take your PT test next week. I'm sure you'll pass. Or it can go the other way, which is you still have demonstrated a lack of um, you know, determination and I don't feel like you're giving your full effort to PT, even though we've had this counseling. It reflects in your latest diagnostic APOT. You miss PT. And as a result, I have no confidence that you're going to be able to pass the record next month, next week. Okay, you got to close it out, right? If you don't close it out, then um, there's no way to adjudicate what you did with the soldier. Okay, we're going to well, then let me talk about it here. Eh, no, I'm going to talk about it when we get to the form. Okay, this is a lot under legal review. Legal has a lot to do with how this form is, is uh, kind of is, uh, go the flow of it. All right, so there's two of these. I'm gonna talk about this one only. This is for individuals that are receiving the counseling. So put your hat on 
that you are going to be the opportunity of receiving the, the um, counseling from the battalion commander or your company commander. Think about it if you were receiving a negative counseling. Your performance was subpar during the past calendar year, and they are giving you an evaluation, okay? Because that's a combative type situation, and you're gonna wanna like immediately show out some counterpoints and so forth. Remember this acronym, it's LISA, okay? Listen, actively listen. Listen without interruption, okay? This is one, who's ever had a political debate with somebody? be all of you at some point, right? Okay? I'm not going to ask your politics, but if you ever had a debate with somebody that you would say something and within that split second, a half a second, they're already showing out a counterpoint. They have not listened to a damn thing you said. They picked up on that one key word that triggers their response and they immediately shout a counterpoint. That's somebody that's not actively listening. If you are receiving or giving a negative counseling, you may see that. That's why I recommend you do the formal portion first. It's not going to be a discussion while we're going to the counselor. This is a one-sided conversation. You're gonna be in receive mode. You're gonna digest everything that I told you, and then when I've finished, and I feel like you properly understand everything, then we may or may not have a discussion based on how productive I feel it is. That's a good way to do a counseling, okay? You probably can't do that for an initial counseling, or somebody you're trying to build a relationship with, but for a negative event-oriented counseling, that's the approach that I take. It's been pretty successful. You need to summarize in a neutral tone. I love that neutral tone, okay? Can somebody describe what a neutral tone is? Inside of order. Inside of order, okay, so the sound or the, the, the how loud it is is important what else it's not emotionally based right which is hard for some people you may have noticed on syracuse <laughs> and most college campuses so it's not an emotionally based response it is you can not like it doesn't mean you can't tell them how you feel or anything it's just you're not gonna, you're not, shouldn't be in defense mode, okay? You don't let them get in defense mode either. Okay, and then you're gonna ask for confirmation, or they're gonna ask you, do you understand? Do you, are you aware of these deficiencies? Do you, do you understand the plan of action? Do you see where I'm coming from? Do you understand how this affects unit morale or whatever? And that's how you properly administer a counseling, okay? Whether it be you receiving it on a negative or you dishing it out, ensure that they're listening or, or put them in a situation where they're forced to listen. Summarize it in a neutral tone, it's not emotional. If somebody disrespects your platoon sergeant and you're giving, well, platoon sergeant probably take the counseling, but if you're stuck doing it, you shouldn't lash out and try to be like, you are not gonna, def you are not gonna do this to my platoon sergeant, this is my platoon, you're not gonna be this way. That, that's not an effective way to counsel, okay? We'll give you some examples here in a second. Any questions? Very forward? All right, a little dry. All right, so everybody take out your DA form 4856. Lovely document. Okay, so the first part, the top page, part one, administrative data, okay? Holder's name, your name, who's giving the counseling. I'm sure you can figure that out. Part two is the background information. This is where you're going to outline what kind of counseling you're giving. Event oriented, failure to pass the PT test. You know, um, professional growth, expectations of platoon leader time over the next couple years. Okay, so here it's just gonna be, you're just gonna address what kind of counseling and you're gonna give a real quick brief, half a sentence of what we're addressing. Disrespect to a commission officer. Failure to adhere to administrative deadlines. Failure to sign on on leave. Whatever it is, okay? That's all. That's really all that goes in there. If you want to give additional background information, that includes like facts about the situation, you can do that, okay? But really, this not that space is not occupied with a lot of words. Part two 
or part three, excuse me, is the summary of the town plan. This is the meat and potatoes version, uh, most not version, this is the meat and potatoes of the council itself. Most important section, this is written in a narrative format. On 5 January 2019, Cadet Alito passed or attempted and failed to uh, obtain a passing score and a diagnostic APFT. His push-up count raw score was 52. 54 is a minimum to pass. We discussed those details. This is unacceptable. Be is, is that this uh, this performance is unacceptable and not within the battalion standard or within the ROTC contract and Army AR 600-9 standard. Failure to correct this situation will result in and you start listing things. Has anybody heard of the magic bullet statement? Some of you have been there in leadership before. No? Okay. So that whole failure to correct this due to will result in UCMJ, those kind of things. There is what we call magic bullet statement. It's a three or four sentence pre-formatted um, paragraph that's approved by the legal office. This should go on every council. And why that's important, and this is why I wanted to bring it up. I was going to bring it up earlier, but I'm bringing it up now. This document is going to be used if you ever try to pursue some type of legal action. Article 15, separation from the Army, um, anything like that. Okay, you want to bring them up on um, charges, any of those different things. This is the foundational form to do that. Okay, this will have to pass legal scrutiny. That's why it's so important for two things in here. It be a narrative format with relevant facts. Okay, if you disrespect an NCO on. 15 February 2019, Cadet Pace and disrespected Sergeant First Class Weber, a non-commissioned officer in the United States Army, by saying that she doesn't care if he has glasses, you should see better, okay? Nice. Things like that, okay? That statement is unacceptable, shows a complete lack of disrespect to a non-commissioned officer for will not be tolerated in this unit. Any further, any failure to comply with that any, any further disrespect will result in magic bullet statement. Okay? Yes. How important is it to pull someone that, for instance, they have a sharp comment? Like, Say that again? Somebody make a sharp comment. How important is it to legally important? Like a quotation or a comment? Yeah, use a quotation. Okay? So it should be something like, so you're talking about a sharp complaint or somebody did a sharp violation of your counsel anonymous. Is that what you're saying? And it's not going to be like critical on that. Yeah, so it's important that you, I, whether it's accurate or not, is it's hard to determine. If you're putting it on the counseling statement, you're saying it's accurate. The soldier that committed the offense may or may not agree with you. That's why it goes to legal and it goes to a UCMJ or a, a, a commander of some sort will make a subject, subject judgment call. Okay, but you should put quotations, you know. If anyone already counts it, sharp violation. PFC Marvin, you told, no, I'm not gonna go into sharp stuff. When I <laughs> you uttered inappropriate comment, okay? And in quotation, the inappropriate comment. To Cadet Sidler on 15 February 5th, 2019. This is a direct violation of the Army sharp policy, will not be tolerated, and you go through some stuff, and then boom, magic bullet statement. Does that make sense? Sure. <laughs> okay, does everybody understand this portion? So the portion that's important here is you gotta have your narrative. It needs to do what we call the five W's. Anybody heard the five W's? Who, what, what where, when, why? Okay. So who, PFC, Marvin, what, sharp violation, when, 15 February, why? Oh my. He's gonna have to answer that one, I guess. But I guess that's more than four W's, but um, that's what has to be done there, okay? Narrative format, it's not bullet points. It is a coherent sentence structure paragraph. You can use spaces. And you know, I heard some people are like, allergic to spacing on this form, but it really is. Make it even flow, it can be read and digested easily. Any 
questions on the front of the form? Okay. The back of the form is what did Thomas mentioned. It's really important when you show up and be prepared to uh, do a counseling, which is the plan of action. How are they going to correct said deficiency? Okay? And if it's a positive counseling, it can just be simply as keep up the good work. All right? I mean, it could be that simple. Okay? <clears throat> but the vast majority of your counselors will be negative or performance based. Okay? You'll put a plan of action how they correct or how they continue to develop. And it needs to be something that's well thought out. Okay? And something that, that's achievable. You know? <laughs> I've seen these before where it's like, you did not pass your PT test. You will get a 300 in the next three weeks. I'm like, okay, great. Not happening, guy. All right, and it's not reasonable. It needs to be achievable. It needs to be well thought out. It needs to be something that the soldier can comprehend and digest and can get behind. Okay, so you will put that. It can be in bullet format or it can be in set to structure. It's up to you. Uh -huh. Do you fill that out, or is that like when you start to talk to the soldier and they don't play together? That is that is the argument, okay? I would say you'd have some uh, immediate plans formatted on there, and then during the course of your counseling, if you discover that you want to add some additional things or some additional goals they want to achieve, just write it in. Okay, any other questions on plan of action? Lastly, we'll get to the session closing. This is where the soldier will initial not check or X, initial agree or disagree. They will sign and they will date. In there is a little box that says individual counseled remarks. So let's say that soldier who failed the PT test has triplets like we talked about or something came up or he was off staff duty, did 24 hour shift and the company called and said you come take a PT test. That, that's, that happened. Not reasonable, not fair. You can put that in there, and that can be documented on the counseling. So when it goes through legal review or all these different things, or it goes to the company commander or under file, somebody can look at it and understand the soldier's point on that. Okay, it's a small space. I don't have it in Bring It, but there is a continuation form to this. If they want to write, and I've seen it before, they want to write a four-page essay of why they shouldn't receive this counseling. Give them the continuation form and let them go at it. Okay, I'll be back in a half an hour. Let me know when you're done. Any questions on that? It's their form to use the way they want. Then you sign under the leader responsibility. Date. There's one spot there, leader's responsibility. These are things that you need to put in there. So what is the leader's responsibility for a failed APFT? They would we're going to ensure that you have every opportunity to attend PT. We will, we will um, put you in the extended remedial PT formation to ensure that you have more opportunity to get PT in. I will follow up with you on a two bi-weekly basis to ensure that you are on track. Those are just some basic things for leader responsibilities. And then the very last section is part four. Assessment of the plan. This is the follow-up portion of the counseling, where you come back 30 days later, two months later, wherever you outline in the plan of action, and you close out right here. Did they or did they not achieve a follow the plan of action? What are the results? They can be good, good to go, move on out, or something bad. You sign, soldier signs, and then you put the date of when you did your follow-up. That is the 4856. Any questions on it? No? Okay, so we've gone through it in its entirety, far more than I ever got as the lieutenant. So this will help, I hope, a little bit. The expectation going forward for you all, who here is a squad leader or above? Most of you, okay? So. If you need to do a counseling for an MS-1 or 2 not showing up the formation or not bringing the proper equipment or gear to lab, something like that, which happens routinely around here, the expectation going forward is that the form you use to conduct that counseling is this. Okay? 
Okay? All right. Now we're going to go into a practical exercise. <coughs> Everybody has a form? We have the Okay, so we're going to do this. You're going to do two counseling. So where everybody's going to do one counseling, I should say. You're going to be the soldier receiving the counseling. Sickler is going to be your counselor. You're going to be the counselor. Whoever is the soldier. Counseling. <coughs> You're the soldier. Counselor, soldier. Frank is the counselor. Thomas is the soldier. Counselor and soldier. Okay? So if you're the counselor, this is your opportunity to prepare the counseling. Okay? So take a couple minutes. Kind of prepare how you're going to do it. If you're the soldier, go into receive mode that you're going to be receiving a negative counseling. Watch out, LT. And then once you're ready, get together as your group, your two man counselor or counseling form, and conduct it on that DA 4856 that I gave you. I have experts, yes. Absolutely. statement okay so just put magic bullet so I know that you did it I think the best thing right here is the 